question marks. And he goes, no, seriously, have you ever heard of something like this in your life? So <laughs> initially I get the email and I kind of like look at it, read it a few times. And I'm like, hmm, is, is this person like into bestiality or do they just have a fetish for smelly animal feet? Like I can get like maybe like the dog or the cat, right? Cats, not so much, because most of them cats, like, you know, shit and piss in their litter box, so it's kind of like, ugh, who the hell wants to smell that? <laughs> like, But dogs in particular, they have, like, you know, meaty-type, like, pads on their feet. They, some of them have very large feet, and I actually had Dobermans, and my Doberman's feet used to smell like cheese, like, che like um, when they were really dirty, they would smell like... Uh, uh, what well, cheese doodles, I guess a good way to put it, right? So I email this person back and I give them this scenario. And I said, is this what you're after? Like, do you have a stinky animal paw fetish, foot fetish? Or are you like, is there something wrong with you? <laughs> like I just came out and said it. And they didn't answer me for like a couple of days and then like a couple of days go by I check my email again and sure enough it's the I labeled the email stinky paw fetish so I would know who it was right so Thursday I get the email and he writes dear mistress wow that's a uh, interesting interpretation of the thought that I was trying to share with you <laughs> he goes he goes no it's like for cosplay like he goes you know having someone dress up as a dog and having stinky, dirty feet. And I'm like, well, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe he, he thought I would worship his feet. Ain't fucking happening, dude. <laughs> like, listen, you'd have to pay me a lot of money for me to, like, smell your feet. That's number one. And number two, I mean... Unless he was asking me because he was trying to get, like, a girlfriend or something to do it with him. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I, I just kind of... So, if you're listening to the show, Stinky Paw Man, would you please get into more detail about your question with the answer? Because your question kind of goes... like it, it deviates from, like, one topic to another, and it's kind of disconcerning is a good way to put them I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how, what to make of it so but thanks for um you know uh messaging me with your question it was kind of an interesting one I, I don't think I've ever in my 32 years of being a dominatrix I don't think I've ever heard someone tell me that they had a stinky animal paw fetish smell type stuff <laughs> like it was it was it was kind of bizarre you know <laughs> like <laughs> I remember a couple of weeks ago I was talking about the, the Roman shower fetish, which is pretty disgusting. If I, I'll, I'll give a brief description of that for those who are just tuning into the show tonight. A couple of weeks ago I did a, a talk about a Roman shower fetish or a, a vomitorium fetish. And what it is is kind of interesting. Back in like the Roman times with like Caesar and all that stuff, they used to like have these large like gorging feasts and they would basically, you know, eat, 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 and, like, get to themselves to where they needed to vomit to, like, make room for whatever else they were trying to do. So they had these, like, shanty shacks, but they weren't, like, shitty looking. They were pretty nice, actually. So, like, if you, go, if you Google a vomitorium from Roman times, it'll show you this big, like, stone building with, like, you know, art carvy like windows, but you had these like open doors that they open like both sides. So you basically bend over and like throw up out of the side of it down this like chute, I guess is a good, or down just the side of nothing. It's like like outside. So it's like a, it's like a outdoor puke house rather than like an outdoor outhouse. I guess is a good way to put it. <laughs> so believe it or not. There are some people out there that have sick, deviated, deviant, like, dog fetishes, right? So, a couple of weeks ago, somebody sent me an email, of, have I ever heard of a Roman, a Roman fetish, a Roman shower fetish? And I said, yes, I've actually heard about it. So, I emailed this person, I said, well... So I said, you know, that Friday show, I would, so a couple of weeks ago, I did a show about the vomitorium. And it's kind of interesting, if you think about it, like... I have friends that I've gone out to eat with, like, for years, like, growing up with people. And 
some of them we would eat like a lot like we go to these buffets and we just like eat and eat and eat and eat and eat so i had this one friend this chick she would like go outside or go to the bathroom and like throw up all her food like and then come back in and like eat something else like and just like it was a continuing like binging cycle so there are people believe it or not that i think um that goes like kind of hand in hand with the feedy foodie fetish that I talked about like prior weeks. Also, like, the last like live show that I had did, I talked about the feedy foodie fetish where there are people that like these guys that pay these women to stuff their face. And the guys go home and like masturbate to the thought of these women stuffing their face with food. <laughs> like, right? So, like, it, you know, some of these like philias, these like fetishes are pretty like intense for a lot of people. Like, a lot of people don't really understand them, so they come and ask me, and of course, thank God, or thank goodness, that mistress knows what the fuck she's talking about, because a lot of people, you know, they tell me they learn quite a, a lot from my show, which is kind of interesting, so thank you, by the way. Um, so, you know, so the vomitorium fetish, believe it or not, first came from Greek Roman times, where Caesar and his buddies would eat and eat and eat and have a feast, and go uh, go outside and vomit, and then come back in and essentially like making room to feast and gorge themselves some more right like at the time they were like fat romans and fat greeks right <laughs> like so think about it both of them use the vomitorium so like you know if anyone's a history buff you might even know this before i knew this so it's kind of an interesting thought but the thing is there are people that actually have these weird type of fetish that stemmed from these types of real times in the past like history so this fella asked me about the vomitorium roman fetish and he asked me if i had ever done it and i said no but i've been on psychedelic drugs in my life to where i uh, for instance i'll it's a true story in 1999 i i went to a fish concert right <laughs> like with a bunch of friends and it was like new year's eve and it was a great show. Like, this was a time where I was, like, heavily into the Grateful Dead. I was still listening to Slayer and Metal, but I kind of, like, was trying, like, a different path for a while. Like, had different friends. We all listened to Metal, too, but we just, like, were going through different phases of our lives, right? So, at this time period, I was eating a lot of uh, psilocybin mushrooms, right? So, like... Um, I'm at this fish concert, and literally, me and me and my friends went, and we ate, like... I think I ate like an eighth of mushrooms one night, like before leaving and going on the train to the, to, it was at uh, Madison Square Garden, right? So I get to say, I get, I have to say, I got to see fish in their prime pretty much. A lot of like these young people that I meet nowadays are like, oh, you were at that show? That's like one of the greatest shows ever. I'm like, yeah, I was at that show and few ones after that at that same time period. Always New Year's Eve fish, uh, Madison Square Garden for like a number of years I went. So anyway, at the last, the one, the, like one of the ones in 1999, I literally ate an eighth of mushrooms like an hour before I went there. So we're at the show, we're kind of sitting in like a really high section, like we had like kind of not nosebleed section, but almost like midway nosebleed section, right? But our friends were like at the top, so we had to go all the way fucking up top. So I'm walking up the fucking steps, they're starting to play, and you know, I'm kind of like in a groove, and basically I feel fucking absolutely downright obnoxiously nauseous, right? <laughs> like totally nauseated. And... I say to my friend, I'm like, listen, I don't think I can climb up the stairs. I, I, I think I really need to uh, to kind of have a seat somewhere. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, I think I'm going to throw up. So we, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even like um, quiet vomiting. It was projectile, like, forceful vomiting, like, and whoever was, like, and mind you, I was trying to walk down the stairs of Madison Square Garden, holding onto the railing, projectile vomiting every, like, 12 steps I went down the stairs, so my friend is following me, and he's laughing his ass off, meanwhile, I'm like, dude, this ain't fucking funny, like, I mean, now I can laugh about it, but yeah, so a few times in my life, I can say 
I have not meant to vomit on people, but it happened when I was at the show and I was projectile vomiting, walking down the stairs and there was like these hippies in front of me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't like move. They were like taking their fucking sweet ass time. And I'm like, like profusely vomiting. And but mind you, by the time I get down to the bathroom at Madison Square Garden, the high pretty much kicked in after the vomiting <laughs> stopped, but literally, I must have vomited for like 10 minutes straight. I'm not even kidding. It was like terrible. So, but then I have to say that night, oh my God, the, the trip that I was on at that fucking fish show was pretty intense, I have to say. But it was it was overall a good show, I have to say. It was probably one of the best times of my life. So, um... I forget where I was going with this whole conversation with me with the mushrooms and the concert and everything, but it was pretty funny. So said, oh, well, because I had a weed delivery. So the the guy who, the, 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 the lovely couple that I met today that came to deliver. I love shopping at BJ's. What are we looking for? Oh, member favorites. And what are they? They're the highest rated Wellesley Farms and Berkeley Jensen items. Members love them. Ah, here's one. Wellesley Farms Chewy Chocolate Granola Bars. Drop them in the cart. I'm dropping in Berkeley Jensen AAA batteries. Oh, and Wellesley Farms blueberry muffins. Dropping in Berkeley Jensen 250 ounce laundry liquid. You crushed my member favorite muffins. Oops. Look for member favorites at BJ's. Deliver my marijuana today. I was telling them a little bit about the network and that I'm a dominatrix in the show, and they were like, oh, that's fucking awesome. So I hope you guys are listening tonight. I give you an awesome shout out. And by the way, that fucking weed was excellent that you brought to my house. <laughs> I guess you could say I'm in a very chipper mood, which is kind of awesome, considering I went to the gym. I was up all last night as, as with my uh, friend smoking joint. So after all the last night, joint after joint, I must have got so stoned last night. It was insane. Um, and then the night before, when Mistress was supposed to do her radio show and did not, because... Um, how shall I word this? Mistress actually went on a date. So, um, it was a very nice date, actually. And, uh, it went very well. And I think this person is really, really nice. And I'm pretty happy that he, he and I agree that we're going to kind of see how it goes and take it slow. But I do want to see him again, and he had said the feeling was mutual, so it's kind of good. So, yes, that's why Mistress did not do a show on Friday night, because <laughs> I was out and about. So, um, I didn't make an announcement that I was was or wasn't doing the show, because I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. So, I don't know. May, Mistress may decide to change the night or day of the show. I'm not 100% sure yet, um, but... I mean, basically, since I own the network, I can probably pretty much do a show any day of the week that I had wanted to. So as long as it's not, like, interfering with uh, Mistress Black Velvet or Rita Daniels on the on when they do their shows. So I try not to, you know, intertwine the network. I like to keep everybody on air separately so we all get our time in, you know, which is kind of cool. So, oh, hey, quick, quick food for thought. Um, Mistress got the network on this mainstream news app called Newsly.com. So if you go on the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store, whatever you, whatever phone you have, and if you go and you type in, uh, it's Newsly, it's a pink and black application. And if you subscribe to them and you actually put in the code CANDY6, you get a free month premium, like all, everything included, pers- uh, subscription for free. So, and then if you continue to use the application, they continue to give a huge discount because you're like one of my referrers. I referred you there, basically. So you get like a referral link. So if you want to join the app, it's pretty cool. They have like um, news and all types of like local media. And what is great about this app is that, um, holy shit, there was a spider just on me. (laughs) No way, where the hell did that come from? Ugh, gross. I'm like, yuck. I felt something crawling down my arm. I'm like, what the hell was that? Um, the Newsly app, it, it's a news media app that actually reads you 
the news so you don't have to like look at the screen you just kind of look at the screen see what you want and then it just continually goes and it reads it out loud to you and then it asks you like um what do you want to do next so it's like an interactive news app